Good morning, and welcome to Pine Grove's morning worship service. Uh, we're very happy you're with us this morning, whether you're physically here in the church or at home watching on the internet. Just make yourself feel at home here and join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, come to you this morning, Lord, praising you and thanking you, Lord. Just our hearts are full of thankfulness for you, Lord, for all that you do for us each and every day, each and every blessing that you send us, Lord. Lord, we pray this morning for those who are sick, those who are sick all around us, Lord, and as this, as this pandemic continues, Lord, to rage, we ask you, Lord, Lord, to look down with mercy, look down with the mercy that only you can provide, Lord. Lord, we, we offer up our praise, we offer up our thanks, and Lord, we know that this too will end and it will come about because of your works, Lord. So let those who are sick turn to you, whether they're sick in body, mind, or spirit, Lord. Let them know that you're the only one who can cure what is wrong, what is deeply wrong. And Lord, if they're lost, you have the, the double cure for that, Lord. Cure the, cure the lost, heal the body. That's our prayer, Lord, this morning. And Lord, we pray for the bereaved, those who've lost loved ones all around us. Touch them and give them comfort. Lord, we also pray for our leaders, Lord. Lord, give them the... Lord, just give them the, the uh, ability to look to you, to guide them. Lord, our world's an immense. Our leaders need to follow you, Lord. You place them there. We know you guide them. If only they don't turn their back on you. And Lord, again, we just praise you. We thank you. And we thank you for the answer to all of our prayers and for those who are here this morning. Lord, put your hand on me that I'll say what you'd have me to say, not what I want to say. But only your will be done. And all the glory goes to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And once again, as you know, if you listen to me very much, you know that I said a long time ago that I was going to tell the message that I'm about to and open up this morning's service with that. So once again, let's consider the greatest event that's ever happened or will happen. We're going to look at it a couple of different ways this morning, but... Now, Jesus Christ left his home in heaven to be born as a man and to die of the most horrific death that was known at the time or ever has been known on a cross to become the perfect sacrifice for all of the world's sin. He did that so that all mankind can have the opportunity to become through him, not through ourselves, but only through him, Reconciled into the household of God. Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verse 9. says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death. So by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Still yet today, throughout the world, there are countless lost people that have never heard the simple facts of the gospel. They've never heard that verse that I just read to you. They've never heard the others. They've never heard the message of John 3.16. And they've never heard that no matter where we're from or what we've done, when we believe in our heart that Jesus is the true Son of God, we put our entire trust in Him and hold nothing, nothing back. But instead... Be fully willing to let him change our lives by repenting of our sins. And repenting means ending what we're doing. Change our mind. 
When we do that, we'll want to tell others what he's done for us. We just can't keep quiet when we, when we actually understand that. You see, it's not about what church we go to or man-made doctrine we follow. Salvation is not about anything good we have done or will ever be able to do. It's all about what Jesus has done for everyone. Christ died for all. Yes, all the sins of the world. Every single one. All at once. He's already paid the price for our salvation. And the price for our reconciliation. And he's waiting on us to accept it. What a deal. It's free. You know, Christians this morning should never tire of hearing and they should never tire of telling about what he's done for all of us. There should be no end to that. That's why we're here. Well, for this morning, Thanksgiving holidays come and gone in the past week. And we've even been through another Black Friday, now considered the biggest shopping day of the year. In several years, you know, I've spoken on Thanksgivings, about the different holidays. And I've told about the origins of Thanksgiving as a holiday in the United States. You know, it's not been around as long as we think, but it's been around quite a while. It's not as long as we think as a national holiday. But now we're told the versions of the first Thanksgiving, you know, the one we learned when I was a kid, Anyway, you know, the ones where the colonists invited the Native Americans over to a feast. That's some, some movies and different things, but they're just movies. Okay, and I agree with that. And we're told now they're pretty much just legends. It really wasn't like that. Well, you know, it's like other things in history. No one that was there or even those who were alive or weren't there are still alive today. And so, let legends be. But even if it's not that way, if that's not the truth of it, well, that still shouldn't make negate or end what this holiday was actually instituted. It was instituted for a national day of thankfulness to our God, to the only God. Thankfulness, a nation that has many, many blessings to be thankful for. Yeah. But let's look at something else. On another note, did you ever wonder how Black Friday got its name? There's a lot of things out there, and mostly they're not true, and some of them are true, but I, I think this is probably the most plausible, and it is historical, so. Let's look at that. It's back in early of 1869. Thanksgiving had already been so it had already been uh, celebrated in some places in the United States by that time, especially on one time in 1865. But a couple of dealers on Wall Street bought up a huge portion of the gold available in the U.S. So you could get it, you could control it then, you know. They were wanting to sell when the price went up. You know, that's what people want to do in the stock market, right? But instead, the stock market crashed on Friday, September 24th, 1869. And the price of gold crashed with it. And many investors went bankrupt, crippling the economy for a long time. So we've had a lot of economic downturns. But on this particular one, because it was on Friday, the newspapers, they came up and started the name Black Friday. See, that wasn't a great day for sales, you know, like we consider it now. But sort of interesting. And this year, Thanksgiving may have looked a little different. You know, we were asked to have smaller gatherings, fewer community meals. That's okay. But did the reason for the true holiday change? No, not at all. It's not about turkey. It's not about pilgrim. 
pilgrims, or legends of pilgrims, or any of that stuff. The holiday was supposed to be about God. The fact that we owe everything to Him who created us. I don't care if you're just here in our America, in the United States. Every human being owes, owes everything to Him, one who created us. And then after He created us and we went our own way and mankind fell, He also provided a way out of the burden of sin and the sentence of death that we brought upon ourselves. His Son, Jesus Christ, He came to sacrifice. And so for just a few minutes this morning, let's take a very brief look at the first coming of our Lord Jesus. And I'm going to look at, just want to read some prophecies to you, okay? Look at Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. It says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the people of Sheth. Now, that's disputed, but it's actually an illustrious prophecy of Christ. He's coming to reign in great glory. Not over, only over Israel, but over all mankind. But see, this, this was his first coming. And we know that it was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. You can look that up and read it if you want to. The, but it's the story when the Magi came before Herod, and we all know that, or pretty much. See, we've got that to be thankful for. That prophecy. And then it was fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Man, that, that, caused, a, that caused a stir. When it actually was fulfilled. And when it was prophesied, people didn't understand it. Because you see the virgin's son, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. If he'd not been Emmanuel, God with us, he could not have been Jesus, which means a Savior. It's also fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. Another cause for great thankfulness. That prophecy came true. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. He was even prophesied where he would be born. Where he would be born. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 6. Another prophecy that came true and a cause for thankfulness. Things we don't think about being thankful for. That, that's what I'm trying to point out to you today. So when we consider the first coming of the Savior, there's one aspect that we should never forget. Never, ever forget. And I'm talking about the strange way in which he came to earth. I just read about it. This is not like anyone else. In a very strange way that he came to earth. But he came as a baby. Born here as a man. And he was satisfied to hide his creating power. Besides that simple humanity. And instead of showing himself as our future judge. He revealed himself as the Lamb of God. And in that is the power of the gospel. But in looking to that plain, simple message, all of these things that I've shared with you already this morning, the sinner can find it to be a message of peace, hope, and salvation. See, I've told you over and over that plain and simple gospel doesn't need embellishment. It doesn't need a shouting voice. It doesn't need a jumping up and down. It just needs to be listened to. 
and repeat it over and over. Because sinner find the message. Be peace, hope, and find salvation through it. I'm going to read you a rather lengthy scripture now. Book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, a familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. It's the way the people of the time did. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave for the, with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, there was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And after he has suffered, he will see the light of life, be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteousness, my righteous servant, will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God in Isaiah. Chapter 53, all about our Lord. Many hundreds of years before he was born, still came true through his life. Now, I want you to think about something. We're through Thanksgiving. We're past that holiday that was meant for thankfulness. And the world continues to spin and the news seems out of control. and Everything just goes on the way it's been going on for the last, how many, nine months or so? Don't despair. Don't forget the reason to be thankful each day. Not just on the holiday. The Bible's in John chapter 1, verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. They asked him, you know. John said, tells him he's not the Messiah. 27th verse, he says, He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. And right after that, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. But he says it in this way. 29th verse, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and cried, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And reading on, then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And John, the one who brought him, was crying out ahead of him, making his path 
No. The 34th verse says, I have seen and testify that this is God's chosen one. Again, Jesus Christ came to be the Savior of everyone in the whole world. If only we let him be. Today we've talked just real briefly about his first coming as the Lamb. His second coming will be much different. And it will be much too late for those caught unprepared for his coming as the judge. So if you're listening, no, you're not putting God first in your life. You're going your own way. If you've never made Jesus the complete Lord of your life, the time is now. It's one day closer to the end of time than it was yesterday. It's one day closer to the second coming of Christ than it was yesterday. Now is the time to ask Jesus into your life as Lord. And you can you don't have to repeat this absolute prayer. Just say something similar. Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. And I ask forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that your son is Jesus, who died on the cross and rose again for me. Father, I give you my life. I ask Jesus to come into my life and into my heart as my Lord. Let him live his life through me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've repeated that prayer, then stay for a little bit. Let's talk about what happened. If you're watching at home and repeated the prayer, find a Bible-believing and teaching church near you today. None are open right now. Call a Christian friend, tell them what has happened. Get on the internet and let them know. I found Jesus today. I've got the best friend that could have ever been. If you want to, contact us through the information on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear about it. If you're here, anywhere near us, in this area in Arkansas, you don't have a church home, Come see us. If you have one, but you've left it, and you went out on your own way for a while, then go back. That's part of God's plan. If He placed you in one, that's where you belong. Not running all over the place and not stopping attending. That's part of God's plan. That's scriptural. You don't have to argue with me. You argue with God. You failed to do that. If you'd like to look us up and attend it, look for Pine Grove General Baptist Church, 102 Silver Tree Road, in Shirley, Arkansas. We'd just love to see you come. Heavenly Father, as we close today, Lord, again, we thank you for all the blessings, and we know that we have more things to be thankful for in this country than anywhere else at any other time in the entire world. And, Lord, if we know Jesus, when we know Jesus, we have the ultimate to be thankful for. We have the Savior in our heart, the Holy Spirit whispering in our mind to guide us each and every day. Lord, keep us safe, keep us humble. And Lord, be with us until we assemble again, or until we see you in glory, whichever comes first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody have a great day.